Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. It is about the big breaking news today coming out of Tottenham that they have sacked their manager Nuno Espirito Santo. It's going to be the main focus of this video. The news was pretty much spiraling and gaining momentum yesterday, but today the official news came that uh, Tottenham have sacked Nuno Espirito Santo as their manager. The two have parted ways. And now a new search for a manager begins. Although, if reports are to be believed, Tottenham may have already found their new manager. Maybe even as this video goes up, who knows. But we're going to be talking about Nuno in this video. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you to please like the video and also subscribe for a new. Both things will always and very greatly appreciated. But for now, let's get back to talking about Nuno Espirito Santo being sacked as Tottenham manager. Saturday saw Tottenham be defeated by Manchester United, a game in which the United came out as 3-0 winners. And that was ultimately the final straw for the Spurs board, pulling the trigger on sacking Nuno from his post as Tottenham manager. Uh, it was a very extremely disappointing and very toothless display from Tottenham on that night. And, you know, you've got to think that in the build-up to that game, this was seen as El Sakiko, as many people called it. A tale of basically two managers that were underperforming, under severe pressure. And they were hoping that their form would turn around in order to avoid the chop, avoid the sack, so to speak. And, of course, on that night, Solskjaer and United were in one corner. Nuno and Tottenham were in the other, and it was Solskjaer and United that came out on top. Solskjaer lived to fight another day. Nuno doesn't anymore. Apparently, on Sunday, there was a lot of talk about how, um, how unstable Nuno's job was, uh, how very uncertain his future was. And those reports and rumours, like I say, continue to gather momentum. They continue to snowball throughout the entirety of the day. So much so that the Spurs board and important members of the Spurs hierarchy, like the sporting director Fabio Paratici, chairman Daniel Levy, and other members of the Spurs board, we had meetings throughout the day or were talking throughout the day about the future of the Portuguese manager and have decided to ultimately part ways with him, uh, bringing an end to his four month reign as manager of the London club. Now, in all honesty, I actually do feel a little bit sorry for Nuno in this scenario. Let's face it, when he walked through the door at Spurs, they were in completely chaotic and carnage like circumstances. Let's face it, we know he wasn't their first choice manager. Hell, he probably wasn't even their second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or even seventh, maybe even eighth or ninth. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but they definitely didn't want him as their manager to begin with. So much so that he was so far down the list of potential managers to succeed that originally Spurs didn't want him. Spurs basically turned around and said they didn't want him and they looked for other options elsewhere. That was obviously until they had gone through everybody under the sun. You name him, Spurs probably interviewed him at some point or asked him about the job. And for one reason or another, everybody turned Spurs down. And then it was revealed that allegedly the new sporting director, Fabio Paratici, was a massive fan of Nuno Espirito Santo. And therefore, there you get the big U-turn that Spurs performed that summer and why they eventually uh, went back on their decision originally. And Nuno did uh, go on to become the new Tottenham manager. Be interesting to see how that relationship develops between Paratici and Daniel Levy now that obviously Paratici's decision to have Nuno as their new manager kind of backfired and it didn't go out as planned. But given the number of candidates that Spurs went through for the job and given some of the names mentioned, such as uh, what would have been a sensational return for Juan Maurizio Pochettino, or even more extraordinary, a world-class manager in Antonio Conte, pretty sure we'll get on to Conte later on in this video. Uh, it was slightly an underwhelming appointment, in all honesty, that Nuno would be given the job. But in saying that, he, he had done pretty well at Wolves. 
So the step up in level from Wolves to Spurs would obviously give a sense of intrigue, although, like I say, not the most exciting or the most, or the most just genuinely exciting of managerial appointments out there, I guess, when in comparison to others. So, yeah, there was a sense of intrigue as to see what he could have done with a step up in quality of the squad. I think what also didn't help Nuno's cause was the whole Harry Kane situation. Let's face it, when he walked through the door at Spurs, they were on the verge of losing their star man, their star striker, their talisman, Harry Kane. A lot of speculation had been brewing about Kane for some time as to where his future may lie. And of course, with the Premier League champions Manchester City circulating and monitoring the situation day by day, it of course wasn't going to help matters for Spurs or Nuno especially. The media continued to ramp up speculation as well, that didn't help, and Kane himself also added fuel to his own fire, which, again, didn't help. It wasn't the ideal situation for anybody at the club or associated with the club to be in, not less so for a brand new manager who had been pretty much just walked through the door five minutes ago. But away from things that are outside of his control, Nuno at times didn't really help himself either. In my opinion, Spurs just aren't exciting to watch as they have been in previous years. To me, they are very boring, they are lacklustre. The football was slow and very defensive. It was going to be interesting to see whether or not Nuno would adapt and maybe maybe change his tactics somewhat and with the step up in terms of quality to the squad that he'd be inheriting with Tottenham and of course everything would go along with that. Maybe he'd be a bit more adventurous, maybe he'd be a bit more attacking. Clearly it wasn't to be, clearly it didn't work out. He tried to play a bit more like he did when he was at Wolves and clearly that just didn't transfer over with him. Ultimately, it just didn't work out. And I get that a lot has changed in the summer. I get that the Tottenham squad changed a fair bit in the previous transfer window and that the start of a new process, a new era, was never going to be built overnight. It was always going to take time. And there were a few big and surprising exits from the from the original Spurs squad that he first took over. The likes of Eric Lamella and Toby Aldevero, two very experienced players that have been at the club for years, had obviously left. And a few incomings in the forms of Christian Romero and Emerson Royal, while showing a bit of promise and a bit of potential, obviously are going to need some time to gel in and it just wasn't afforded to Nuno or them for Nuno at the time. But overall, you've got to think, it's not been the most exciting of starts for Nuno. It wasn't the most exciting of starts for Tottenham under this new era. No... Nothing really jumped out, nothing was really exciting, and especially another thing that didn't really help Nuno's cause in this was that when you look across the other Premier League teams that have got new managers, they have, for the majority of them, have got a new manager and it looks promising, it looks full of potential. You look at Patrick Vieira, for example, at Crystal Palace. A lot of potential there and already you can see that he's building something and an identity there with Palace. You look at Bruno Large with Wolves, plenty of attacking football, an identity, a lot of potential, a lot of promise. There wasn't really anything like that with, with uh, Nuno and Tottenham here. Not at least in my opinion anyway. It's being said that the final nail in the Nuno coffin was allegedly his loss of authority. Apparently there was some sort of squad revolt, or I guess you call it, or player revolt, however you want to put it. Uh, according to some reports that occurred, at, especially after the game on Saturday night, in which the players went to the powers that be in the higher ups at Tottenham and stated, simply put, that Nuno isn't up for the job and ultimately that is seemingly why he's got the sack so very early on. And to be honest, I'm not entirely surprised by that. I think a lot of the Spurs players, with maybe a few exceptions of the likes of Hume Min Sun and Lucas Moura, basically down tools for Nuno, especially after the very, very early games uh, of, of his reign as manager. I think they basically down tools. They displayed a lack of faith, a lack of respect, a lack of professionalism and belief in the new manager. And especially for Harry Kane, for obvious reasons, 
he just hasn't turned up at all this season. Uh, so he's definitely one of the big uh, big players to really be putting that on, I guess you'd say. It may possibly be the drop-off or the downgrade in manager, having previously gone from Jose Mourinho to, of course, Nuno. There is a bit of a drop-off there. Um, or it's just simply put the tactics that Nuno plays. They just aren't compatible with this Spurs squad. And sometimes that just happens. But maybe it could be a bit of both. I don't know. I don't know the full ins and outs of this entirety of the story. Either way, neither side in this situation has covered themselves in much glory in this aspect. And it has left Nuno leaving Spurs in eighth place with five wins and five losses from their opening 10 games of the season. They're still in the Carabao Cup, which I guess is a minor positive given everything. But even their Europa League Conference League, Europa Conference League uh, campaign hangs in the balance. Um, and with each poor performance and poor result that comes, fans were already growing impatient. And of course, that has filtered all the way through to the Spurs hierarchy. Question is though, where do Spurs go from here? Well, if reports are to be believed, then allegedly Antonio Conte is extremely close or possibly has actually been confirmed as the new Tottenham manager as this video goes up. But at the time of recording, at least, he is said to be extremely close to agreeing everything and officially becoming Tottenham's brand new manager. I, at first, didn't believe this. Of course, this story was floating around a lot yesterday when uh, Nuno's job was in serious, serious jeopardy. I didn't believe this at first. I thought this was a plant by Antonio Conte and his people because if you remember last week, he was practically very close to joining Manchester United, apparently. He was very close to being the successor to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer once the United board eventually gave him the boot and got him the sack. But, of course, a week later, uh, Solskjaer still hasn't moved. And I, I just assumed that Conte had put this story out there as a way to try and get United's attention and to try and make United uh, go into a move and force a decision uh, on them on the Solskjaer as which to say we've got Conte free right now but we could potentially lose him if we don't act fast. I thought that was the situation but of course it doesn't appear to be that way as of right now. I'm going to refrain from saying it is official because I have made that mistake before when, of course, Paolo Fonseca was said to become the next Tottenham manager and then at the last second performed a U-turn and it didn't. So I'm going to refrain myself from doing another similar mistake. Look, we know anything can happen in football and if Conte does go, as seems to be what is going to be happening, their fans would love a world-class manager at that club. Of course they would. They'd be mad not to regardless of the playing style some may say it's a bit more defensive some may say it's a bit more pragmatic than they would like but they would love to have a world-class manager like Antonio Conte at that club his history his reputation his resume his sheer quality it speaks for itself they'll be extremely grateful to have a manager of that caliber at a club like Tottenham who have not won anything in god knows how long do I think it would happen? Like I say, at first I highly doubt it, but now it seems to be that it is actually happening. I believe that if this was to happen, it would happen in the summer when it was first talked about. I didn't think that they would come to some sort of agreement partway through the season uh, on this and they would give in to Conte's demands or Conte would see eye to eye with Daniel Levy. But in saying that, this doesn't appear to be a long-term appointment. Conte doesn't really stay at her clubs for long, mainly because he doesn't see eye to eye with the ownership and sometimes is very, very stubborn and that is why he ends up leaving or getting sacked or whatever it may be. I don't... It'd be interesting to see how this relationship plays out and how this relationship works between owner and hierarchy and and Antonio Conte if this does happen. Very interesting to find that out. Um, but like I say, we're going to have to wait and see if this all gets confirmed and made official. Should happen probably within the next 24 hours if reports and everything is to be believed.
But of course, as I always say, these are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of the news that Nuno Spirito Santo has been sacked by Tottenham? What do you make of possibly his successor being in the form of Antonio Conte? Of course, like I say at the time of recording, it is not completely official yet. There are still some things that need to so, uh, seemingly be discussed. And if reports are to be believed, then it is very, very close, but not official yet. I would like to know your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it, down in the comment section below on this topic. I'm sure it'll all make for interesting reading as Tottenham are entering some very interesting times ahead. Otherwise, hit that like button on the right. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things are always and forever be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talk video. And I will see and speak with you all again soon in another video.